In this video, we are going to discuss the Gram-Schmidt process to convert a linearly independent set S into an orthonormal set in R3 with usual inner product. Now this linearly independent set contains three vectors. The first vector is u1 which is equal to 110. The second vector I am going to call u2 which is 101 and the third vector is u3 which is 0, 1, 1. This set is clearly linearly independent because if I calculate the determinant of the three vectors 110, 101 and 0, 1, 1, the determinant of the three vectors three things will come out to be non-zero. So the set S is a linearly independent set. We can clearly see that these three vectors are in R3 and they are linearly independent and you can see that they are not perpendicular to each other and their lengths are also not one. So we want to convert these three vectors which are perpendicular to each other and whose norms are or lengths are one. So as per the Gram-Smith process, we will now construct a new set of vectors v1, v2, v3, where we know that v1, I'm going to choose the same vector as u1. This was uh, discussed in the Gram-Smith process for two vectors in R2 and the same extension I'm going to follow. So v1 will be u1 as it is and v2, the vector v2 is nothing but u2 minus projection of u2 on v1 bar. So it is nothing but here in this case it is u2 which is 101 minus projection of u2 on v1 bar means u2 v1 bar upon norm v1 bar square into v1 bar which is nothing but v1 bar is u1 bar which is 110. Let me write it here which is equal to here 101 minus inner product of u2 which is 101 comma v1 bar is 110 upon norm of v1 bar square is root 2 the whole square into v1 bar which is 110. So that will give me this inner product is usual inner product means it's a simple dot product. So minus this inner product dot product will come up to be 1 upon 2 into 110 which is 1 minus half comma minus half and 1. So this becomes your vector v2 bar which is minus half sorry which is half comma minus half and 1. This is your vector v2. So you can see here u1 is v1 and u2 I am going to make perpendicular to u1. After making it perpendicular that vector we have called it now as v1. You can see that they are really perpendicular to each other and showing in different dimensions. So this new vector that I have obtained which is v2 is now actually perpendicular to u1 or v1. Now we will obtain v3 and we know the formula for v3 will be similar to that. So we are going to extend that formula. So it is u3 minus the projection of u3 on v1 and projection of u3 on v2. So we are going to project u3 on v1 and v2 which is nothing but u3 is 0, 1, 1 minus the projection formula is u3 v1 upon v1 square into v1 bar plus u3 v2 upon norm v2 square into v2 and we will substitute the values of u3 v1 v2 here. So it is equal to 0 1 1 minus the projection of u3 and v1 means it is a dot product of u3 and v1 which is 0 1 1 v1 what was v1 v1 was 110 you can check above upon norm of v1 which is root 2 whole square into 110 
plus u3 means 0 1 1 comma v2 v2 is just now obtained above here which is half minus half 1 in a product upon here v1 v2 bar which is again half minus half and 1 and the square root of these quantities which is 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 the whole square and then we will find out the dot product so this will be equal to 0 1 1 minus this inner product is the 1 1 plus 0 so it is actually 1 upon 2 this is 2 into 1 1 0 plus the next inner product is also similarly half upon this quantity of square root comes out to be 3 by 2 times this vector half half with the minus sign and 1 and this means it is 0 1 1 minus half half 0 minus this simplification is 1 by 6 clearly minus 1 by 6 and 1 by 3 and this simplifies to minus 2 by 3 2 by 3 and 2 by 3 so this is the vector v3 so we have obtained v1 here which is 1 1 0 v2 which is half minus half and 1 and last vector is v3 which is minus 2 by 3 2 by 3 and 2 by 3 so you can see that I'm, I have u3 there and I'm going to make it perpendicular to both these vectors v1 and v2 so I'm making it slightly perpendicular now and you see v3 is now moving so that it is perpendicular to the previous two vectors so u3 will now become v3 in this process okay you can see that all the three vectors v1 v2 and v3 are now actually perpendicular to each other so v3 has now been converted into v3 so this is now an orthogonal set therefore the corresponding orthonormal set now we want to make the lens one will become v1 bar dash is equal to v1 bar upon norm of v1 bar right which is uh, v1 bar was 1 comma 1 comma 0 and the norm of this is obviously root 2 so which is 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and 0 v2 bar dash the second orthonormal vector which is v2 bar upon v1 v2 bar is equal to v2 bar was half minus half and 0 we have done it above and the square root of 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which finally becomes 1 by root 2 comma minus 1 by root 2 and 0 the third vector is v3 bar dash which is v3 bar upon norm of v3 which is v3 is here we have obtained it minus 2 by 3 comma 2 by 3 comma 2 by 3 divided by square root of the squares of the as a sum of the squares which is 4 by 9 plus 4 by 9 plus 4 by 9 and this finally simplifies to minus 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 and 1 by root 3 so this means that this set of vectors s double dash which i'm going to call v1 bar dash v2 bar dash and v3 bar dash is now which type of a set it is now an ortho normal set so we have converted a linearly independent set into a orthonormal set using the Gram-Schmidt process.